we'll go from there. Yeah, so I'm Amy Kello. My business um, is Everybody Pilates. Um, I'm based in the UK in Portsmouth, so about an hour and a half away from London on the south coast. Um, I've been teaching Pilates for about 20 years, um, yes. and my background has been quite varied. Um, I started Pilates in a gym environment, so um, took my first mat certification, my two-day mat certification, um, <laughs> at, um, in with a fitness company. Um, like, stood in front of my first class teaching, thinking, why are they moving their hands like that? Why are they, like, what are these people doing in front of me? Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I'm, I'm making them do that. That's me. That's me hanging, like, moving my um, arms everywhere. Yes. Um, so quickly realized I needed another, like, certification. <laughs> um, so kind of started looking for equipment certifications, went to, hi, Annie, um, went to classical, because I was like, I want to do it Joe's way. Right. So I yes. started to look for um, classical training in the UK and came across Peak Pilates. Mm -hmm. um, did my training with them. And then um, shortly through my training with them, they asked me to become a teacher trainer for them. Yes. Um, An MI? What do they call them? Master yeah, I, I wasn't MIs back then. I was okay. <laughs> it was way yeah. back. Oh, right. um, so it was before, it was just before Mad Dog, like, brought them out yes. so um yeah i became a teacher trainer for them and had the pleasure of um having claire duncy be my mentor at that time um so fl flew over to boston and she kind of um trained us up to how to run the courses um and claire's just um one of those amazing educators and yes. um i think it's really interesting you go through you know all these different programs and you learn from different people and sometimes it just brings you full circle back to those people in the beginning that said those one things that yes you didn't really understand at the time right so like right. you know I must have been a I must have been a train wreck when Claire saw me like my Pilates must have been <laughs> awful horrendous <laughs> like yeah yeah right yes. um like I just started my journey into Pilates mm. I was um you know it was all thighs and arms and you know you know the you know no yes. no connections whatsoever um mm. <laughs> so she must have been like oh my god what we got here mm. um <laughs> so a lot of the the things that she did back then didn't really make sense to me at the time but like after years and years in practice and training you yes. go oh wow that was amazing i I know that now. Yeah. I understand so what, that now. What, what would be one of those old moments? What would be one of those things that, that makes sense now that didn't make sense at the, at the time? Oh, like lifting, like your legs are going to be light. Like you're, you know, like being able yes. to lift your legs off the floor and they're light and they're weightless mm -hmm. and you don't feel them. Like Instead of muscling of your way through the movement. Yeah, absolutely. Gotcha. All, yes. all, those, all those cues that you don't really believe that your Pilates teacher like <laughs> is yes. telling you the truth. <laughs> yes. You know, when you're at that yeah. beginner level and you're like, oh, that's, ne that's never going to happen. Right. Like I'm it's never going to, yeah, I'm never going to just float my legs up off the floor when they're going to be weightless. Yes. That's what do you never mean gonna... float? Where is it? Well, like, what am I going to use to make this float? <laughs> yeah. And then suddenly one day you go, oh, oh, it, mm. oh, they were telling the truth. Right. It does happen this way. <laughs> yes. And it's so funny if you say that because yesterday when Steve and I were talking, we were talking about those moments from the other side, from the teacher perspective, when we say it and say it and we give it another way and then we demo it and then we are hands on and we, we use every tool in our toolbox and they don't get it and one day they float up. Yeah, and it's when you give up on them. It's when you turn around and you go, oh, I've, I've given you every, every cue now that I can possibly give you to get this right. Yes. I'm just not going to bother today. And then right. they do it. And you're like, right. oh. And I have, some, I have some great teachers that work for me. And I had this one student who um, was always so adamant that she couldn't do roll-ups just over and over again, just couldn't do it. And I think I went away for a week and one of my teachers covered and I came back and she was doing roll-ups. Yes. And, and she's like, like oh, well, Anna just said it differently to you. And I was like, oh, 
okay, so you just needed to hear it from a different person. Right. And that's fine. Right. It, it kind of hurts sometimes, but it's fine. <laughs> you know, a little it's bit. A little I've, got, I've got over it now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So with your Pilates business now, can you talk about this Everybody Pilates and what, it, what your vision is there? Oh, okay. Um, so I think, um, like everybody, visions have been changing over the last six months, right? We've had to adapt a little bit to, to how businesses run um, and everything, the way that you kind of manage yourself and your staff and your clients. Yes. Um, so everybody Pilates has been um, a, a physical studio for um, 12, 13 years. Yes. Um, five years ago, we opened uh, our second studio. So we have two locations. And at the same time, we um, introduced franchises for our business. So oh, we have some franchise, we have a franchise studio in the Netherlands. Yes. Um, so we work with, we've been working with them primarily in the last five years to help them grow their businesses. Yes. Um, at the beginning of, or just before the beginning of lockdown, when we knew things were starting to, to come, we kind of sat down and assessed what it was that we wanted our business to to do um and how we wanted to grow how we thought we might be able to survive like not having the physical space for a while right. and so we decided to go into a project that we wanted to do for like the past 10 years which was like making our online videos service Okay. Um, so at 32 weeks pregnant and, uh, <laughs> and a week and a week into like towards lockdown, we decided we had to first start filming. Um, yes. Ed, my other half does all of the filming and like the video stuff and editing and making the websites and everything else. So I just had the easy bit of standing in front of the camera and just yes. teaching. So, just show up. Yes. Yeah, just show up. <laughs> don't yeah. move around too much don't go into labor like just just do your thing <laughs> yes. uh, so we managed to get a huge chunk of videos done and then over the lockdown period we um ed just worked on on um developing that side of the business for us okay. uh, we which has been like really brilliant to have to have that kind of um thing to step back on but knowing it was always a project in the line pipeline anyway. yes yeah absolutely i've uh, i've said that from day one in this that you know in as a business owner we spend so much time working in the business that we don't spend enough time working on the business mm. and biggest mistake that you know that you make isn't it you know you to yes. say that you can't find the time to to work on your business i it, i've made I, I make that mistake all the time to oh, nice. just get yeah. absorbed into it. The, the interesting thing for me, um, we have 15 members of staff that work for us. Okay. Um, and in the UK, we, um, the furlough process for the staff was that they would get paid 80% from the government for, um, for that to cover their salaries whilst yes. we we're closed, but they weren't allowed to do any work for the business during that time. Yes. So my natural instinct would have been, right, I need to get on Zoom. I need to run live classes. Mm -hmm. But I was 32 weeks pregnant and I was like, I can't run live classes because in eight weeks time, I'm going to have a newborn yes. and I can't build up classes and then not have, then not and, have staff to take them right, or to, exactly. to do anything like that. So it was a real difficult decision for me because I would normally just get my head down and go, right, zoom, zoom, let's teach, like, let's get as much we can, much, you know, contact with other people as we can. Yeah. Um, so that was a real challenge for me kind of mentally to be able to go step back, mm -hmm. work on just the video service, like get that going because it's not going to take your time, Amy, to like have to sit down and do it. It's going to take Ed's time, yeah. <laughs> which is fine. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's, that's, but it wasn't going to take like physically take up my time to yes. to do that so i could have some time to you know have a baby right <laughs> minor details that little, little, little thing side project yes. yeah yeah the, the other side project exactly. right yes make a baby yes. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. So that's a whole conversation around work-life balance, right? Like, I mean, and, but the blessing of being forced to make those pivots and step away and do this well is that's that really is the blessing in there because you would have like you said you would just head down just drive forward with yeah, what you're doing yeah, and continue absolutely. to work in the business and never really work on the business yeah absolutely and i think um it's been really interesting to I'm a, I'm a bit of an observer kind of i know what everyone's doing i just kind of like sit back and have a look see what's going on um and i think it's really interesting the um mental strain the financial strain on everybody over the lockdown that whether people have been like reactive to it or whether they've taken the step back and being th had a thoughtful process about it yes um and i think you know everybody was fine for those first like couple of months and then suddenly the realization of hang on we're going to be in this for the long term how do we now like keep the energy going by yes. teaching our online sessions or how do we transition into going back to teaching in real life mm -hmm. um and i think that's really been a tough point for a lot of people and and so Absolutely. you know you know we have to kind of think about how we process that as teachers process that as clients um how we as teachers support our clients in coming back or you know all those kind of elements it's really it's a really tough place that a lot of us aren't kind of used to dealing with right exactly and like you were saying about support i thought like you know in in working out terms if i was in the gym i say you know your work is only as good as your rest and while we're in this phase of working, 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 and then we have to adjust to this, you know, this quarantine, this lockdown and stuff, we just kind of work in different ways, but never actually stop for a moment to put a plan in place so that we could work more strategically. Yeah. And that rest and that moment of pause would probably have done us better than to continue to push forward with the next yeah. step. You know what I mean? I like. I think it's really interesting. I know there's a few uh, teachers that I work with who just had to get, to, who got to the point where they're like, right, I have to step back from social media. Mm -hmm. Like I have to step back and take a week off. Um, I was talking to one, uh, um, somebody who used to work for me and I was like, it's fine to just take a week off. You know, yes. you can't be expected to, to keep going and going and going and, and try to sustain this level of, energy which is incredibly different through a screen than it is right. real life um and it's like you know you would take a week off in real life teaching don't let the pressure of the unknown make you keep going at this point that's wise yeah thanks <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like, oh, I should write that down. <laughs> I know, I, I actually did. Um, because it's, I'm, I was talking with my colleague here about the word support, right? And what does support look like mentally, physically, emotionally for our clients and also for our team members, right? For our staff. It looks different, but there are some common threads. So like, what, what does that formula for you look like? I think... Um initially we had to make sure that um the contact with our clients was there so we have clients that are you know we you see your clients week in week out we had some clients come into the studio three four times a week they mm -hmm. have relationships with their teachers you know whether it's a whether it's a sounding board or whether it's the teacher that beasts them every week whether it's their comfort level you know you don't know what's going on with clients usually right. outside of their you know, outside, outside of that time yeah, in their pilates bubble you know mm -hmm. and suddenly you had to get into a little bit of that outside bubble to make sure they were okay yes um so we kind of they some of our teachers would just go live with their own workouts and kind of go do you know what i'm just gonna work out today come join. if you're there and you want to yes. join in with me come join in with me um, so we had Kerry with her twins running around in the background, you know, like everybody. And, and suddenly our clients got a little bit of insight into our lives. Yes. But we just, we weren't just um, the teacher 
in the studio. Right. You know, we're the teacher with the crazy kids at home running around just like everyone else. Yes. Um, we're the teacher who's, uh, you know, had a bottle of wine one night and got a bit of a headache the next morning, but they're still going to like still get on and work out the next morning. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, and it's, you know, the teacher that's been for a 40 mile bike ride and is really stiff and needs to stretch. Mm -hmm. Suddenly they were relating to us a little bit more. Yes. So um, they could still have that bond with their teacher and, um, and feel connected to the studio in some way. And it wasn't like the studio was just ripped away from them. Yes. Um, yeah. And I also think that helped the teachers a little bit. I was going to say, it really does. You, you build a richer relationship. There's more of an investment when they see that. I know that even if I'm, that I'm really a stickler for being on time, for example, but the one time that something comes up where I'm late, and there's as much as I feel so bad, your clients are so like, oh, it's fine. They almost revel in seeing our humanity. Yeah. Right? Yeah, a little. A little. <laughs> it's like, oh, good. You're late sometimes too. Whew. I thought I was like, they want to see us. Like, oh, you're human. You're human. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, and they, uh, yeah, absolutely. And they like to know, like, I think some of the feedback as well when people were working out was that they were seeing people struggle with the exercises. And it's yeah. like, you don't normally let on that you, like, really struggle with this particular exercise, <laughs> right? You're like, oh, that one's easy. You can yeah. do it. Like, we all do that one every day. Right. So exactly. they, just, they just get to relate to you a little bit more. They do. And Except for the times you have, like, you've done three or four online classes and this is your fifth time doing side leg, you know, sidekick series for the day and you I just can't get, oh. <laughs> that happens too. I'm just like, I'm just going to stand up while I, you do your. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to talk you through this one. <laughs> right. But you see, you even have the verbiage ready. I'll talk you through it. Yeah, so yeah, I'm well, well versed in, in yeah. uh, knowing when to give up the demonstration. Yes. <laughs> These are the fine details, people. This is a seasoned veteran speaking right now. <laughs> yeah. I know which exercise I can always demo, and I know which ones I need to avoid. Right. I'm sure your clients can see the trend that they're watching like, every past video. It's like, wait a minute. She has oh. never done. <laughs> yeah, I, I have some of my like advanced clients that have been coming to me for like 12, 13 years of it who will actually turn around and say, can you demonstrate this one for us, please? Right. And you're like, no, no, you need to learn this one for yourself. <laughs> yes. So there's no documentation of you doing a boomerang anywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, too funny. Uh, what's going on with your workshop next weekend? Okay, so we um, had originally planned for... Brooke, Sila, and Dana Santi to be in the studio with us in the UK. Okay. It was planned. We had them um, last year for a weekend. Mm -hmm. And they, this was supposed to be the, the follow-up to that. Okay. Um, obviously, that was never going to happen. Um, mm -hmm. So we decided that we would do an online day to kind of keep people connected and keep people um, working out. So we've got um, like a four, three and a half hour, four hour like block planned. Yes. And um, Brooke and Dana have been like really, um, hi Caroline, um, have been really good in like the schedule looks amazing. I think it's going to be a really kind of dynamic three or four hours. Um, yes. It's not kind of like a two and a half hour workshop where they're just spilling lots and lots of lots of information. Um, we're going to start off with what they're calling a circular mat. Um, so they gonna, they're going to co-teach that. Okay. Um, and then Dana teaches a mini workshop. And then Brooke teaches a mini workshop. And then we finish up with another mat class. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really nice balance of kind of what's going to happen during the day. So you yes. get to work out a little bit, you get to learn a little bit and then you get to work out again at the end of the session. Mm -hmm. I like that format too. And I mean, just, you talked just about the importance of that education piece because we do these conferences and it is like, well, let's just get some stars in the room. It's like, well, no, like, let's set it up so that people can absorb and apply this on Monday morning. 
Yes. Those are, those are almost two different approaches, right? Yeah. Um, so we ran um, two conventions in the UK okay. in 2013, 2014, where we had um, Jay come over. Jay, Sandy, Karen, Andrea, Elisa. Um, so I have done the work and teaching the work with Jay. Um, so I was in the first group that went through teaching the work. Okay. Back in 2013, right. I think. Um, I think. <laughs> so there were six of us. There was Ken, there was Sam, Elisa, Andrea, Nicole, and myself that went through teaching the work. Um, which was amazing and during that time we decided we wanted to run a classical convention in the uk um so everyone hopped on a plane came over grats um sent all the equipment over david came over and and supported the convention amazing. which is amazing um so we we ran two of those events and it was it's really interesting you, like you said do you have the the workshops where you want to have the star and you want them to perform or do you have someone that like workshops where you want to feel that everybody takes a little bit away with them and learns something integral yes. to the work and right. I think the group of teachers that we had uh, oh we had Mijo as well and um, the group of teachers that we had at our event support the learning and the background to learning Yes. More than the showcasing. Right. Um, and I think, I think that's where I come. I think that's where I come from in my way of teaching and my way of educating people is that um, I've, I've been taught that, you know, you get really good at the basics and the intermediate stuff and then the tough stuff comes on its own. Yes. Um, so you, you know, I've had it, I had so you know you have so many discussions with people don't you about training programs and who to train with and who to work with and how you're going to get that basis and how do you progress someone to that the star on the reformer how do you progress someone to um how do you progress someone to candlestick you know how do you get them there and actually you don't progress them there that you you when their body's strong enough they'll be there yeah. You work them in the basics, you work them into the intermediate system and you drill them in those exercises and you create a sense of strength from within to be able to then just let them go free and explore those exercises and they'll figure it out on them by themselves. Yes. Because they'll know where to work from. They'll know that they're, oh my God, it's hard. Where am I going to get my strength from? Yes, yes. Um, and I think the people that we had... Um, like working with us for our conventions very much build from that sense of um, let's go out and build a strong body as yes. opposed to let's go out and do a crazy exercise. Like by all means do the crazy exercises, right. but know that you've got to have the strong body in the basics and the intermediate system to get there. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a great way of approaching it. I never thought to ask this question before, but in those advanced exercises, do you ever teach people how to fail correctly? How to, how to, like, you know, if it was like a BMX biking or skateboarding or something, you almost have to learn how to fall, how to not be afraid to fall or how, you know what I mean? With these exercises, we're teaching basics, but then as they get that confidence to explore exercises, do we give them that safe space where they can fail, where they can fall, where they can a really good question isn't it well well done you for coming up with that question i like it um it's a really good question and where does that permission to fail come from as well um i know that in i know that in one of my last weekends with jay um that he was teaching the flying squirrel and everybody was going up and having a turn on the flying squirrel <laughs> and it, i was like last in last in line <laughs> last in line <laughs> at that point and he just looked at me and i looked at him and he was like amy doesn't have to do it today and i was like oh thank god like yes. i was petrified that like yeah, yeah i'd never done it before um and i was absolutely petrified and he knew that i wasn't ready for it either emotionally physically like 
whatever zone I was in at that point, I wasn't ready for it. Mm. Um, so he didn't push me for it. Yeah. And I was, I was so thankful for that. <laughs> <laughs> so like he gave me that permission to like not have to put myself into that position to try it in the first place in front yes. of peers, in front of a group. Um, but the next time I was there, I'd figured out so much more in my body. Mm-hmm. So the next time he kind of nodded at me, I nodded at him and, you know, we, we did the flying squirrel. So, yes. you know, it's, it's really that interesting space of comfort emotionally, physically to be in. Yes. Um, and I think like, this is my theory when so I've got a three and a half year old. I've got a four month old who is being so good and just napping on the sofa next to me. I'm loving it. <laughs> that means you're an amazing mom. That's all that is. <laughs> no, there was lots of rocking before, <laughs> before we went live. Like, <laughs> get to sleep. Um, <laughs> um, I think like from what I, the really interesting thing for me was coming back from and retraining when I've had, when I had Leaf was my body told me when I wasn't, my brain told me when I wasn't strong enough to do an exercise because I was scared of it. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm scared of this exercise, but I've been doing it for 15 years. This should be one of the exercises that I can do. But suddenly there's a level of fear about the, the exercise that makes me step back from it. Okay. And I was like, that's because my body's not strong enough. Mm. So I started to really use that kind of intuition and listening to fear, sensing people's fear about exercises, knowing when to, knowing when to push them, knowing when to let them step back from an exercise. Right. And it's like, hang on a minute. Like this is a really powerful teaching tool for me because if I feel nervous and scared of this exercise, it's because my body and my brain are telling me, I haven't got it yet. Like, hold on, Amy, you you haven't got that connection back yet. Yes. So don't even go there because you're going to fall on your ass and, and make a spectacle of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and like learning to then go back and go, what, what exercises do I need to do to get back to this point? That's the question. Yes. You know, be respectful. Like I had to step back and be respectful of, what my brain was telling me mm-hmm. and then slowly build up the other exercises again to go to go back and do that um, and then I was like wow if I feel like this and I reckon recognize this in me and I've been doing Pilates for 20 years how how on earth is my client who's been doing it six weeks gonna recognize that they don't know how to they, listen to that yet they don't know how to listen to that yet they just they just get a sense of maybe embarrassment that they can't do the exercise, mm-hmm. frustration that they can't do the exercise, um, confusion that they can't do the exercise because they think they can muscle through it. Right. Um, but they don't yet know it's because that brain, their brain is telling them that they haven't got the connections yet. They don't know that they've got to do the other exercises. So as a teacher, it's my job to now go, okay, they're scared what does that tell me about this person yes um so, yeah, the comment there. yeah to clients put... who are just scared to put down or go backward how do you guide them yeah i think you're on you're on you're online with what you're saying right now with that yeah i i think you have to you know you take them somewhere completely different first of all you take them out of the scenario yes. so i would like if they're getting frustrated and um are going backwards in the movement uh, it's not going backwards it's going forwards mm. it's not that they're going backwards in their learning yes. um they're learning something new and their body yes. is processing it differently yes so I always, when you, whenever I see somebody who say they can do great roll-ups um, or they've been doing something before and suddenly they can't do it anymore, it's not because they can't do it. It's because they're processing new muscle connections in their body. They're yes. learning to do it a new way. So in order to learn to do it in a new way, they have to go backwards. They have to go back a step. They have to learn it a different way or or learn it in a different place in the studio. Take them to another piece of apparatus. Take them away from the point of failure Mm -hmm. and take them to somewhere where it's a successful movement pattern. Right. Yes. 
and and build it up that way in the head going backwards and like what does that mean? like emotionally maybe emotionally actually caroline if you could just yeah put your comment there and just answer that question for us just to understand that clarify that for us yeah um i have a business question for you though yes so you have articulated beautifully how passionate you are about education and empowering other people with that education. But at the same time, I hear like that business acumen, that only a couple of studios and, and being able to step back and plan your next steps for the business. A lot of the trainers that I work with, flies and starters I speak with, they're either kind of one or the other. They got the education piece and they want to teach others or they're, they're business oriented and they want to open their own studio. And it sounds like you have a nice balance of both there. Yeah, I think, um, I don't think I ever really intended to go into opening my a first studio to start with. Mm -hmm. When I was teacher training for Peak, they were like, you need your own studio, Amy. You need to be like running courses. And I was right. like, oh, oh, okay, do I? <laughs> um, I was... <laughs> I was uh, working as a, a project manager for a environmental consultancy company. Okay. So I was managing um, asbestos contractors and removals and projects and things. So it was completely different. Um, sounds kind of like Pilates, but not quite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of, uh, yeah. Yeah, everything everything is Pilates, right? Everything has right. got those uh, elements to it. Um, and I didn't really think I would be... My ultimate goal wasn't opening studios. Um, but I think when you get to work with lots of different people and you see how difference that you can make, you kind of fall into this path um, yes. of wanting to do the next thing so initially it was like wanting to do the next thing how can mm -hmm. i get to the next point of um of being busy in the studio like i was working you know we've been there we've all worked 60 hours a week teaching pilates and charging a minimal rate and like yes. how am i gonna i'm getting more clients in how am i gonna fit all these people in like i need another mm -hmm. teacher let's grow the business that way and then oh i need another teacher let's keep on growing the business um so initially it kind of is an organic growth yes. um and then we were looking at our education so we were we did run an education program initially um but we were um we sat down and kind of said well how do we make sure that what we're putting out there for everybody that comes through our programs is a quality teaching program and that they continue to to be like quality yes. teachers right. so we decided that the franchise route was where we wanted to concentrate for a while um so we concentrated on that but for me um i was missing out on the energy of teaching those new people like the new beginner teachers yes. and i was i was missing that um mm. so we decided that like we would start to introduce our education program again. Um, so we're doing that next year. We're bringing back our comprehensive program and a master's program for people that I already know. Um, and again, taking the time to go, I want to do this in my business. Yeah. I think that's, and recognizing that, recognizing the organic growth has actually come from a point of, passion but also a point of decision making yes being able to go okay it, it's grown organically but actually i made a decision whether i knew it or not that i wanted to teach people yes i've made a decision that i want to uh run a master's program i've made yes. a decision that i want to do this how do i then put that into action i would um, say now chase after it okay so i've i this is organically right here Yes. And make a decision now let's chase after that decision that we've made that's Absolutely. more than speak for it but i hear i hear you yeah yeah and it's and it's i think it's the de decision like ed will always tell you that i'm reactive okay. that i'm i don't plan <laughs> so <laughs> like it's my or, or the he'll tell like all of my staff will say everything's in my head yes. and they're the ones that have to get the information out extractive they have they're the ones who have to extract all the information and put it down on paper um and make it they're the ones that make it happen um, <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah it's it's making that 
kind of decision that that's what you want to do and how you're going to get there. And I think yes. I, I'm kind of one of those people that has to put a date down and say, it's going to happen mm. then. Yes. And often that is right. We're going to run a workshop on that date. Like let's write the title of the workshop. Yes. And advertise it. And then I'm, and then I have to be, um, then I have to do something about it. Wow. Right. So you're like a true entrepreneur. Like, let's build let's make a parachute after we jump out of the plane <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> like let's problem solve this now <laughs> right. um, wow. and, and and i like and i think i get the energy from that i get the energy from those like i want to do that let's do it yes. let's set a day and um and let's now we now we like plan it and now we get it happening yes um, I'm laughing like in my head because one of my teachers is on here watching and she's the one that was, always has to deal with my <laughs> deal with my decisions going, okay, how are we going to make it happen now? Yes. Um, that's, <laughs> but that's, going, that's oh, so, no. yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> it's so funny because you see that as an adventure and she probably sees that as like, I'm going to vomit <laughs> because there's no way we can get this, make this happen sort of thing, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, like, how do I get her as excited about it as me, you know? Yes. <laughs> True visionary. Yeah, and, you know, I think, recognize the things that you're good at and just so turn, like, step back and go, do you know what? I'm really good at training people. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, I feel like I have a skill in this. I feel like I have a skill in making people understand Pilates. Right. And, you know, as teachers, we should step back and say that to ourselves more often. And it's, it's not arrogant. It's not, you know, um, you know, it's not something you should be ashamed of saying. Right. So you should be able to say, do you know what? I've, I've got a business that I've had for 15 years. I have a business for a reason, you know, mm. because we're good at teaching Pilates to people. We're good at making people mm. feel good about themselves. We take care of our customers. We give them a little bit extra um and all of my teachers in our studios do that we instill it as part of their training it's like how are you going to make this person feel good about themselves yes forget about the pilates today this person needs a hug how are you going to give them a hug now without teaching them without touching them how are right. you going to make pilates give them that hug from within and make them feel good about themselves and that's Beautiful. part of that's part of the teaching process and that's um that's what i feel like we can do yes really well and you know i've got to the point probably only this year where i can step back and go do you know what i'm good at that i can mm. do that i'm really good at teaching people how to teach pilates i'm really yes. good at making them realize that they have to figure it out for themselves and how to get them to figure it out for right so you, know, you. You, have to, you have to yeah joel you have to like own your own successes absolutely yes um and it's okay to do that and you, and you know what in this past six months like sit back and say to yourself i'm good at that right i have succeeded in lockdown in doing this yes and i'm gonna keep hold of that and i'm gonna take it with me for the next two years of my business and equally you gotta recognize what you're really bad at <laughs> yes <laughs> but let's stay on the good for a moment yeah. here. let's just let's camp out here for a second just like yeah. look at the bad points and go oh yeah like get rid of them quickly like yes. if you know you're bad at it get rid of it quickly and keep going with those good points mm. that's the like don't stay in your bad moments too long no, right, exactly. But we've, all I, made, I, we, we've all made bad business decisions. Of course, of course. The reason I wanted to camp out on the good for a moment is because I think we're really good at recognizing what we're bad at. Mm. But we're not as good at recognizing what we're good at. Yeah. So absolutely. let's just hang out there for a second and be like, I am good at X, Y, and Z. These are the things I'm, I'm, I'm strong at or, or awesome at or however you want to phrase it for yourself and just recognize that and celebrate. Just hang out there for a moment. Yeah, absolutely. And if you work with other teachers, let them know what you think they're good at. Yes. You know, we attract different 
clients because we're good at teaching different in different ways right um, so if you have a baseline of clients that you can always get to do uh, so one of, one of the things that I'm really good at teaching people really quickly now going all the way back to the beginning of this conversation is lifting legs off the floor and making them feel weightless so I can okay. I can easily describe to someone how to do the double leg lower lift all the way to the floor lift the legs up and make it feel weightless because in my head I have processed that over and over and over again and got to the point where I fully understand it yes so if you have colleagues around you that can always get somebody to do um, the push-ups, who always can get somebody to do a roll-up, who can always do, you know, get that one person to feel it in the elephant. Yes. Like, tell them how good they are at that. Like, Great. let yeah. them know that, do you know what? You're really good at making people feel successful in that exercise. Yes. And why is that? What do you do that is so different to the way that I do it? And then we can learn from each other. We make that person feel um, that they, they're empowered to share their knowledge a little bit more and yes. they're empowered and excited to continue to teach. Yes. Amazing. That's fantastic. I love it. Yeah, I, love I can tell you. I can tell well, you, you love it. It's just you know. <laughs> I, I mean, I have all I have all kinds of time for people <laughs> like you that love this as much as I love this. <laughs> and, and, and you know, and you have to love all. Well, you don't have to love all elements, but you you know, you have to love. Um, you have to love like what you're doing, and mm -hmm. the moment you don't love it, it's because it's not because you don't love it anymore. It's because something's changed in your head. That's making you think that you don't love it anymore. Yes. So you've got to go back to the, go back to that elephant and teach everyone how to do it amazingly because they're going to then give you the energy back that you want to, yes. to feel again. Exactly. Take yourself yes. out of the situation that makes you feel frustrated and yes. get, be successful with your clients and, and get them to be successful because then your their successes will make you as a teacher more successful and will elevate your desire to continue to learn and to continue to do what you do. Yes. I see uh, your, I don't want to turn everything into a formula, but in what you're say, saying there, I hear once again, that theme of get out of your context, listen to yourself and then step back in and do you yeah yeah absolutely and i think um it's a conversation i have with jay on like my last time i was there is like how do you use your intuition as a teacher yes. um, and he was like asking me to describe how i teach someone and i was like well oh god <laughs> okay jay i'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> what you want to hear um but it was like okay well i look at the body i see what's going on and then i try and feel what that body is feeling if i yes. can feel what that body is feeling and take it into my own body change it in my own body and then put it back to them then i'm gonna see change in their body yes so i strategy. feel what they feel and then i give it back to them and get them to change that yes. and that's i guess that's a really good way of letting yourself um sorry you got a grizzly boy now um, <laughs> yeah, we have eight minutes left anyways i know the time bomb's gonna go off any moment <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a really good way of like listening to other people as well yes. like if you have some a teacher coming in and i see it all the time who feels uncomfortable teaching a certain client Yes. And you feel that like empathy in your body and you feel their discomfort. Mm -hmm. Like what can you do to take that away from them and give them something to make them feel better about teaching? Yes. Um, and if there are elements in your business where you want hello. to, um, hello. It's so cool. uh, if there are elements in your business where you feel that, mm -hmm. then take it away take the feeling away from the business, reassess it, put it back in and, and try to start again with it. You know, it's, it's about listening to that intuition. We do it in our teaching a lot, but we don't necessarily do it with our business. Right. Exactly. Well said. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> 
You're just dropping Pilates knowledge and holding a baby. And... Oh, wow, well, you know, you got to get on with it, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> just get it all done. Uh, in the six minutes we have left, any closing thoughts just as we finish off here? Um, any closing thoughts? Um... Oh, don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a close For all of our class, though, they're just don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> don't cry. I think that's an yeah. uh, element where we have to work on. Um, I think I think it's really important to just listen to yourself yes. and your instincts, right? I know, mm. I know, like, teach from a point of intuition, but I think you have to learn how to listen, not listen, recognize intuition as well. Yes. Um, take it away from the feeling of stress take it away from the feeling of um success take it away from like, like with so many emotions get rolled into one yes um anxiety is like you know take your intuition away from your anxieties and listen to um what that actually means for your teaching for your business um and recognize how your emotions reflect in your in your teaching in your business yes i think that's really at this current time i think that's really important absolutely well said now I, i'm inspired and challenged to listen more and to listen better based on this conversation so <laughs> excellent. excellent so good mission accomplished amy yeah thank you <laughs> Awesome. Okay, I'll sign you off. Thank you so much for joining me today. I Thank really, really appreciate the chat. Uh, I'll have Dana and uh, Brooke on at some point next week just to talk more about the workshop so they can kind of highlight what they're doing. Um, I'll, even if they come on for five minutes just to talk about it. I'd love to just like spotlight different workshops and things that people are doing. So, Thank you. My pleasure. Okay, have a great day. I'll sign you off. Angie, it was great to, great to talk to you, Martin. Thank you. Bye.